The title of my presentation is Effect of Residual Stresses on Fatigue Rate Growth. Fatigue failure may have important human and economical consequences as illustrated by the failure of this mountain bike frame. The design against fatigue may be done using the damage tolerance approach. In this approach, we must be able to predict fatigue rate growth with accuracy. Fatigue rate growth is usually studied using the ADM delta K curves obtained with CT or MT specimens. A typical DADM delta K is shown in this picture. Delta K is assumed to be the crack driving force. However, Delta K is not able to explain the effect of stress ratio or variable amplitude loading. Therefore, the crack closure concept was proposed by Halber. It assumes that there is no damage while the crack is closed. Therefore, an effective Delta K is proposed, which is the difference between K max and K open. However, the K-based approaches have several limitations, namely, they are only valid in small-scale yielding regime, which is not easy to define. The crack shape and the corner points are source of complexity, and they do not provide an understanding of the underlying mechanism. In fact, researchers do not know what is really happening at the crack tip when they are using stress intensity factor. Therefore, it is recommended to look to crack tip mechanisms and to use nonlinear crack tip parameters. The main mechanism behind fatty crack growth is cyclic plastic deformation, and Laird's model explains the formation of striations on fracture surface. This picture shows some striations on a fracture surface. Different parameters can be used to quantify crack tip plastic deformation. In this work, we will use cumulative plastic strain at crack tip. Therefore, the main objectives of this work are to develop a numerical approach to predict fatty crack growth based on cumulative plastic strain at crack tip, and use this uh, numerical approach to study the effect of residual stresses on fatty crack growth. A CT specimen with a width of 50 mm was considered in this study. Only one-fourth of the specimen was modeled, considering adequate boundary conditions. A pure plane stress st uh, state was considered. The simulations were made with or without contact of crack flux. V this is very interesting to isolate the effect of crack closure and is only possible in the numerical work being impossible in the experimental work. This slide presents the finite element mesh. In the crack propagation region, the element has a size of 8 microns. The accurate simulation of crack tip plastic deformation is fundamental for the accuracy of numerical predictions. The material studied, which is the 2024 T351 aluminium alloy was uh, simulated considering Swift isotropic hardening, hardening law and Lamette Chavosh kinematic hardening law. The material parameters are presented in this table. Fatigue crack growth was simulated by node release, which occurred when the cumulative plastic strain at crack tip reached a critical value, as illustrated in the figure on the right hand side. Plastic strain increases progressively with load cycling and the node is really released when its value reaches the critical strain defined by the, by the horizontal dashed line. The figure below is a detail for one load cycle. We can identify two linear regions between A and B and C and D, and two uh, regions with plastic deformation, B and C during unloading, and D to E during unloading. The ADN is defined by the ratio between the size 
of finite elements, which is 8 microns, and the number of cycles required to reach the critical plastic strain. The critical value of cumulative plastic strain is obtained considering one experimental value of TDN, which is represented by the horizontal line in this plot. Several simulations are made with uh, different values of critical cumulative plastic strain. The intersection between the experimental and numerical curves give the critical value that must be considered. For the material being studied, a critical strain of 110% was obtained. This numerical approach was used to study the effect of delta K, and the comparison was made with experimental results as presented in here. A good agreement can be seen, which indicates that the approach is adequate to predict the ADN. In order to produce a residual stress field, the temperature was increased in a small region ahead as the initial crack tip position. The increase was from 20 to 70 degrees Celsius, and this produced the field which is represented in this plot. There is a region with compressive residual stresses, which are about 69% of material yield stress, yield stress. On both sides, there are tensile stresses, and the transition from compressive to tensile stresses is relatively sudden. The low conductivity was assumed to the material in order to keep the temperature field during crack propagation. This slide plots the effect of crack length on the profile of residual stresses. Three crack lengths are considered, being 16.5 mm the initial crack length. There is always a peak of compressive residual stresses immediately ahead of crack tip, and the, the initial profile of residual stresses disappears progressively with crack growth. This slide shows the predictions of the ADN. Without thermal residual stresses and with contact of crack flanks, which is represented by the green triangles, there is an initial decrease of the ADN, which is associated with the, with the formation of residual plastic wake and the appearance of crack closure. After the stabilization, there is a progressive increase of the ADN, which is associated with the increase of crack length. Uh, the introduction of thermal residual stresses produces an increase of TDN in the presence of tensile residual stresses and a decrease of TDN in the presence of compressive residual stresses, as could be expected. Notice that the profile of um, residual stresses at the initial character position is represented and the black square indicates the transition from uh, tensile to compressive residual stresses. The remotion of the contact of crack flanks produces a significant increase of TDN, which is associated with the, the, uh, the elimination of crack closure. The, the, the increase of crack Crack length once again produces um, a progressive increase of the ADN. But more important, there is no effect of thermal residual stresses in the um, absence of crack closure. This indicates that the effect of thermal residual stresses is associated with crack closure phenomena. This slide compares the variations of the ADN with corresponding variations of crack closure. The crack closure level is quantified by the parameter U star, which is the percentage of load cycle during which the, the crack is closed. Both with or without thermal residual stresses, um, there is a perfect match between the variations of the ADN and the variations of crack closure, which, which indicates this, that this phenomenon uh, explains the trends observed. 
This slide plots the variation of PADN with crack closure quantified by U star. The increase of U star decreases the effective load range and therefore the ADNS could be expected. An interesting linear trend is observed. In here we can observe the effect of thermal residual stresses on CTOD plots. There is a trend for the movement of CTOD curves down with the presence of thermal residual stresses. In the presence of contact of crack flanks, this produces an increase of crack closure phenomena and therefore a reduction of TADN. Without uh, contact of crack flanks, the, the, the presence of thermal residual stresses does not affect the, the, the curved shape and therefore does not affect crack tip plastic deformation. So the main conclusions of this work are a numerical model was used to predict fatty crack growth rate in the presence of thermal residual stresses which were produced by heating material ahead of initial crack tip position. The compressive residual stresses produced a decrease of the ADN, while the tensile residual stresses produced an increase of the ADN as could, be, as could be expected. Finally, the thermal residual stresses effect was clearly associated with crack closure phenomena. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.